Corla. Taoiseach, almost eight months ago now, during leaders' questions, I raised with you the concerns and the number of specific and critical threats facing the agricultural merchant sector. This is a sector that employs over 10,000 people across rural Ireland, in many villages and towns where there is little or no employment opportunities. We're fortunate enough to have these agricultural merchants. And I want to point out that in my own constituency of Lee Shoffley, we have many agricultural merchants. So they provide a, an important source of employment for many people. We're fortunate to have agricultural merchants such as John Grennan and Sons in Kilcormick and Rath. And then in areas like Tullamore, Edenderry and Port Arlington, we have Midland Veterinary. Now, these are towns that are hit badly with unemployment levels and have been for decades. So it's very important that our agricultural merchant sector is protected and that we do everything possible. But unfortunately, there are a number of threats posed to the agricultural merchant sector. And the threats relate to an EU requirement that will come into force in January, whereby all veterinary medicinal products, including antiparasitics, will be subject to a veterinary prescription, as well as the likelihood that an EU directive which allowed for the exemption and maintenance of non-prescription status on some products will be scrapped. You personally stated at the time I raised it, eight months ago, that you did not want a situation to develop whereby people are rendered unemployed as a result of the application of this EU directive. Unfortunately, Taoiseach, we are now eight months on from those commitments and the likelihood of job losses, unfortunately, has gathered momentum. Agri-merchants have engaged throughout the process, constructively and in good faith, in a multi-sector forum and they are increasingly of the view that the entire consultation process was never going to do anything but deliver a predetermined departmental outcome. This is despite the fact that the veterinary director of the HPRA has clearly, st clearly stated already that when it comes to the prescribing of antiparasitics, the agri-merchants are, and I quote, not the root of the problem and that the licensed merchants have made and continue to make a valuable contribution in this area. The Minister and the Department of Agriculture have made it clear, however, that they have no intention of changing their interpretation of the regulations for prescribing antiparasitic medicine. This is despite widespread condemnation from farmers, farming organisations, horse owners, pharmacists, licensed merchants, cooperatives, MEPs and the Joint Committee on Agriculture. The new regime, if allowed to be brought in, will effectively eliminate the category of responsible person from prescribing these medicines. Thank this you, is Deputy. completely unjustified. And Tishuk, I just want to ask you, like, what are you going to do? This is going to have a serious impact on Thank employment, much, but Deputy. also on 140,000 beef and sheep farmers who will be disproportionately impacted. Thank you. Tishuk, please. Well, first of all, as, as I've said, first of all, this relates to an EU directive and the transposition of an EU directive, uh, which is an obligation on all member states of the European um, Union. Um, and it does, as you know, a stakeholders group has been established uh, and the minister is engaging with that group with a view um, to dealing with the issue of antiparasitic resistance, um, antimicrobial uh, resistance, uh, to maintain, whilst at the same time maintaining competition within the market uh, and keeping costs down um, for all um, concerned. Um, and there is a safety dimension to this as well, uh, and, and an animal health protection dimension um, to this. We, we still are the only country in Europe, for example, at the moment that doesn't require a vet um, prescription uh, for antiparasitic uh, treatments. I mean, that, that's the, the reality we're currently dealing with. But we want to get a solution to this uh, that, it, that enables the sector uh, to continue to provide the valuable services that it provides to farmers across um, the length and breadth um, of the country. And it is a very important um, sector, um, obviously in terms of employment uh, and across the region and rural Ireland in particular, it provides very valuable employment. We're very conscious of that. Uh, and whatever has to be done has to ensure a level playing field across this country, uh, but also one that uh, a framework that does fulfill our obligations under the directive, 
with, without unduly adding burdens uh, to the businesses concerned or to the sector concerned or to the farming um, community. But clearly a balance has to be struck uh, between animal health and safety and ultimately human safety and uh, with all linking through to, 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 to food sa safety ultimately. Uh, these are important and serious issues that just can't be ignored either. Uh, and the transposition of a directive imposes obligations on the state. Uh, and the minister uh, is working with the stakeholders group uh, to try and get a resolution to, uh, to this issue prior to the deadline, which, as you say, is its commencement think of next year. Deputy Nolan. A good Taoiseach, I thank you for your response, but I do want to point out that responsible persons within agri-merchants, and there's 1,600 of them, highly skilled, and agri-merchants would have invested heavily in ensuring that they have training. They are very skilled people with knowledge and expertise, and our farmers also, they know their livestock and, and their animals more, more than, than we can give them credit for, and do give them credit for. But what I'm saying here is that not to reach a compromise here, or a fair compromise in a constructive manner, would be ignoring the voices of farming organisations such as the IFA, the ICMSA, the ICSA, and indeed our farmers and agri-merchants, who have all voiced their opposition to this. And they are the experts. They know how rural Ireland operates and they know how farming operates. So what I'm saying is that we need to engage constructively and we need to reach a fair agreement and we need to reach a constructive a solution to ensure that no job is lost. Because I know, for instance, in the Midlands, we cannot afford to lose any jobs. At the moment, there's no jobs being created under a just transition. And I'm here raising this matter again for a second time because you, it's Deputy. so important and we need to make sure that there's a fair solution, a workable solution, and that the jobs, 10,000 of them across this state, are protected. Thank you very much, Deputy Nolan. Well, as I Please. said, the Minister is absolutely committed to reaching a constructive resolution of this issue and a fair resolution uh, of this issue that obviously uh, intends to try and maintain employment obviously within the sector but also ensuring that we can fulfill our obligations uh, and to keep costs down uh, for all concerned particularly uh, those in farming in particular who avail of, um, of, of, of such services. We, we understand that fully, we understand the issues and we're committed to doing that. And also to say that uh, in relation to just transition jobs are being created in the Midlands from job of just transition and jobs will be created in the Midlands from just transition, both in retrofitting uh, and also in terms of the rewetting of bogs and in relation to a number of other developments. Uh, and we intend to put together now um, you know, a, a series of, of measures which are already underway uh, to illustrate that point because it's extremely important under just transition uh, that the funding that has been allocated um, is brought to fruition in terms of the variety of projects uh, that have received funding from Just Transition, that those projects are brought to fruition quickly and that they create jobs on the ground.